It's a lottery. Sammy. Sarebi. Look out. Look out, Australia. Sarebi has done it again. To mark the centenary year of the Fiji Rugby Union, our special guest this week is Waisali Sarevi, by common consent, the country's most famous player. Blessed with an almost magical sixth sense and an ability to conjure something out of nothing, Sarevi was a fixture in Fijian teams in both sevens and fifteens for more than two decades. Now based in America, he's come a long way from his island upbringing. Born in Suva, one of five children, he was greatly influenced by the touring British and Irish Lions. In 1977, I was like washing my clothes uh, after school, and people were like shouting, they were like really happy. And I asked my mom and dad and my parents, why are these people happy? And they said, oh, Fiji has just beaten the British Lions and at the National Stadium in Suva. So that was, and then in my mind came, oh, maybe rugby makes the people at home happy. I want to, if given a chance to play for Fiji, I want to make people happy. His school teachers, though, were less impressed by the hours he spent playing the game. The time came when a choice had to be made. My dad asked me, Can you, do you want to repeat and go again another year? And I said, no. Thank you very much. I had enough of school and I focus on rugby and I really train hard and uh, Christmas and New Year, people were celebrating I was on the road running uh, because I went to the Hong Kong Sevens in 89 and then uh, I thought that I want to go there every year. While people were celebrating, I was like Christmas and New Year was not in my calendar. I was running, since I was running, see people drinking and celebrating on the road. For Christmas and New Year, I was on the road running. And uh, that was uh, how I was brought up as a little kid. In 1989, Sarevi made the first of 18 appearances at the Hong Kong Sevens, the world's most famous Sevens player helping Fiji to victory on eight occasions. Sarevi kicks through, it's on his own. Yes, a superb try for Waisali Sarevi. My first trip to Hong Kong was like, uh, uh, I was really looking forward to it. In 88, a lot of people in Fiji said, oh, Sarevi should go, Sarevi should go. And I was like taking it easy and I said, I have still have a lot of years to play rugby. So I kept training. Then 89, I did it and then I went to the Hong Kong Sevens in 89. And uh, I was like unknown coming onto the field and I remember playing my first game in Hong Kong versus Hong Kong, I think. I scored like four tries. Uh, I was really excited and uh, we lost to New Zealand in the semi-finals. After I went back from the Hong Kong Sevens, I said to myself, no, this is the one that I want to play every year. So this is the goal. His selection for the Fijian Sevens and 15 sides came in the same year. It was heady stuff, but some paternal words of wisdom ensured the young Sarevi would keep his feet firmly on the ground. On the first tour, going, I was touring uh, with the 15 side, 15 aside, to England, Scotland, uh, France, and Belgium. And uh, he told me two important things. One, uh, you have to be Waisale Serevi when you go, and Waisale Serevi when you come back. It doesn't change anything. And secondly, you have to respect every people on the land, wherever you are. Those are the two things that made me work really hard trying to be a normal person. When I get onto the rugby field, when I get on the ground meeting people, it is not voice less rave that the people know. For myself, it's just, I'm just a normal person. And later in the show, we'll talk more with Serevi about World Cup success and his plans for the future. Waisali Sarevi's career has been nothing if not eventful. A veteran of seven World Cups, three of them in the 15s format, he'll forever be most closely associated with sevens. And it could be nowhere else but Hong Kong, where he achieved his greatest moment in the game. I think the main highlight was like for my rugby career was winning the World Cup sevens in 1997 for Fiji. And uh, that was uh, made the people of Fiji stop 
and everybody was watching TV and it was celebration all over Fiji. Uh, the, the second one, together with the World Cup Sevens in 2005, when we had older players. In Fiji, I always say that uh, we always mature late in rugby. We always mature at about 25 or 26, but uh, not like the rest of the world. In Australia, New Zealand, all other, they mature at 18, 19, 20. They are, they, because of the programs that they go through. For us in Fiji, we don't have the, that that program for us. That means a lot of us mature a little bit late. So for the World Cup in 2005, a lot of players, even the whole world of rugby was like riding off Fiji because they have a lot of older players, including me. I was like 37 at the time <laughs> playing for Fiji and a couple of older players like Vili Satala, Marika Bunimbaka, Semi Sinai, all those big players. And uh, we brought them and we trained them. We know fitness-wise we didn't, we didn't, uh, uh, we couldn't match them fit, but uh, we were with experience. We try and keep the ball and spread the ball, spread it wide when we have, and because we have fast players. That was uh, two exciting moments for Fiji. And when we came back home, it was like really the people, the whole people of Fiji, not only in Fiji, all over the world, they were celebrating because we won the World Cup uh, in 2005. Sarave has also achieved much in the 15s game. Capped 38 times for Fiji, he's played club rugby all around the world, in England, France and Japan. But his professional career ended in the unlikely setting of an unfancied club in South London. I came to Staines and I thank uh, Stabzi and uh, all at Staines Rugby for giving me the opportunity to play with Chris Shisby, with my mate, Chris Shisby. He was great and I had a good time. We played a season together and we won that out division and then we promoted to the next division and uh, it was really good. After the victorious 2005 Sevens World Cup, Sarevi became Fiji's player coach and guided them to their first ever Sevens World Series title in 2006. This, together with his many other achievements, made him an obvious candidate for the IRB Hall of Fame. Nowadays, Waisali is focused on running Sarevi Rugby, an organisation that he believes can help him return something to the game that gave him so much. Rugby has given me a lot. Uh, I have 21 years of rugby, World Cup, Sevens, World Cup, I went seven and won two as a captain for Fiji. And rugby has given me a lot. Without rugby, there's no Waisali Sarevi. So I want to give back to rugby, try and help kids, tell them encourage them that there's a sport here, rugby. Uh, it's amazing. It has the World Cup, it has Commonwealth Games, and definitely it's in the Olympics now. And uh, I want to encourage kids to try and get rugby and set goals for them, little goals to get to the big goals. But Sarevi now has his sight set on the prize that wasn't on offer when he was a player. I would love to be part uh, of a national team going to the Olympics and win the Olympic gold medal. That is my goal. Which national team, the question is, which national team is still hanging in the air at the moment. And that is my goal, and I believe, I believe in that, and I'm really working hard to getting the gold medal 2016, wherever I go to. <laughs>